So what is one of the things that women change the most often? It's their hair. It's their hair color, right? It's their hair. They're spending all this money on hair. So thinning hair and losing hair is a big issue. So there's over 20, probably about 20 million American women that are really concerned about hair loss because they are losing their hair. They have thinning hair. And if you're a woman that's 65 years or older, 65% of them will experience some sort of hair loss or thinning hair. Now there's all these lotions and potions and all these weird gadgets so that you don't lose your hair or you actually want to regrow your hair. We've all heard of, of Rogaine, right? It's about using all this stuff externally to try to get you to grow your hair back. But one of the missing links here is that those are just, I always say, kind of the band-aid effects. You really got to find out what is the root cause of hair loss. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video today. I'm going to talk about some of the five most common causes of hair loss and what you can do about them. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, number one, they're all going to stem back to hormones. Yes, hormones. The hormones are the your language's body of, of communication. That's how your body communicates, is via hormones. The number one most common one, well, I wouldn't say the common, it, it, the five most common, I should say, but one of them is usually testosterone or um, a woman that has PCOS. So we often see that in PCOS, this is a woman that um, the way they're, uh, the way they look like they're losing hair is a lot of the hair is preserved here in the front and most of the hair loss is from about here um, all the way to the back, okay? Their scalp is really oily. That's one thing that you're gonna notice. So the common cause, and common cause for that is because of the high testosterone levels. And um, unfortunately, we do see that in women with PCOS and we do see it in women that are just going into perimenopause. So if you're a lady that's going into menopause, and remember menopause or perimenopause, it's almost like a 10 year time span. So that's crazy. Uh, it could be even a woman in her 40s that's experienced this. So um, if you do, some of the things that you need to start doing is you've got to follow an anti-inflammatory eating plan. So what does that look like? Lots of vegetables, organic vegetables, um, clean, hormone-free, pesticide-free animal products. Um, those are the, the big ones that you wanna have. You wanna get rid of the sugar. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that you would do well with, of course, uh, wild-caught fish, <laughs> one of the best. Um, so what happens here is the testosterone for us women, it's actually a stressor to us and it'll create some oxidative stress in the hair follicles and you'll end up losing hair earlier than you want to. So some other strategies for this are um, when women, you can take even think something like um, salt palmetto that has an anti-androgenic effect. Um, effect. Spearmint tea is another one. Having up to like three cups a day of spearmint tea would be very helpful as well. So I'm trying to think here of some other um, strategies that you can you can do. Number two, we see this a lot as women that are have iron deficiency, and we see this mostly in cycling women because an iron deficiency occurs when you have your cycle, especially if you have a heavy flow. You're losing a lot of iron, and you need that for healthy hair growth. Now. One of the ways that you can find out if you're low in iron, go in and check in your iron, to, um, just your iron is not enough. So you wanna make sure that you check your ferritin levels. A lot of doctors don't do this, but what we will see that in order, if your ferritin levels are below 80, you're gonna be losing your hair, okay? We wanna see your ferritin levels about 80 or above. So if your doctor's not checking that, you need to get that checked. So, um, it's really important 
the uh, some of the sources of iron are you've got heme sources which are animal base and plant base which are non heme sources so your heme sources are going to be of course something you probably never even tried oysters beef liver chicken liver beef and eggs those are your rich sources now when it comes to non heme sources which come from plants they're not as um, as favorable as the heme sources are going to be like spinach, um, let me say molasses is another one, and even some lentils. So those are some other other things. What happens here is when the numbers go below 80, you start to enter this phase called the telogen phase. The telogen phase is it's a phase that that's when your hair follicles will start to fall out. So. We don't or say hair fall. That's when the hair is will start to fall out. So we really want to make sure that um, once you get this phase, the hair will be released so much easier and it falls out. So when your iron levels get that low, you're kicking the body into going into that phase so much quicker. Um, another one is going to be a low functioning thyroid. I think this is one of the most common reason women are losing their hair. Um, the difference with the way, um, well, let's talk about the iron, go back to the iron. With the women that have more of the testosterone issue, their hair loss is more, they have the oily scalp and the hair loss, this is usually all preserved, but it's usually from here and back. With women that have iron deficiencies, the hair loss is usually diffuse, it's all over and they have really thin hair. So they're losing hair and it's also thin. So um, that's one of the, the things that you're going to see and it's really brittle as well. The third one is usually a low functioning thyroid. The problem with the thyroid one, it's usually linked to an autoimmune condition. And so one of the ways that you're going to see, what you see here is the hair is very um, coarse. It's, it's just like they, it has no life to it. Um, it's very brittle. So it looks, it almost looks like um, a straw broom. You know, you've seen women with that hair and it's just very brittle and coarse and there's no pizzazz to it. So that's usually from a low functioning thyroid. Low functioning thyroid is often associated with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune condition. So what we're gonna see with that is you've gotta get full thyroid labs and rule out Hashimoto's because what you're gonna see here is you've gotta check your TSH, free T3, free T4, um, total T3, total T4, reverse T3, you've got to check your antibodies because you are going to run into a lot of um, a lot of problems with this. Um, also even checking zinc and vitamin D levels are going to be very helpful. Zinc you also need um, for healthy thyroid. You also need to make sure that your thyroid, um, your, your T4 is being converted to T3. So you need zinc for that. You need healthy vitamin D levels as well. Um, usually between 70 and 85. So that is another thing. Um, most patients will be on some sort of thyroid medication. It's usually a T4 like Synthroid or Levothyroxine. That's not going to help, especially because so many women have a problem converting T4 into the vial available active one T3. So you want to make sure that you get that, um, you get that tested. I think what happens with a lot of women, they get so anxious that if, you, if you're losing hair like right now, it's not because of what you did yesterday. You gotta look back to see what happened three months ago because something that you did three months ago has pushed you into that telogen phase. So that's where you start losing that early hair loss. Another one that most is uh, uh, really often overlooked is inflammation, insulin resistance, blood sugar issues, people that are diabetics. So that will promote um, a lot of cortisol and when you have inflammation you're going to get a lot of hair loss um, as well insulin resistance um, so a lot of times with the inflammation they have that belly fat right here it's like no matter what they do and this is a really stressed out uh, we say a stressed out person and when you have inflammation it's not always just pain inflammation can be in the gut it can be in the brain it can be in the heart so those are some other things that we need to look at Another one, um, and so their, their hair is usually coming out also um, sometimes in chunks. 
But the, the fifth one that's very, um, I think affects most women, I personally know that I've had this one is stress. Stress is huge in women. Your hair is actually just coming out in clumps. That will happen. So my recommendation is um, stress management is going to be huge. Uh, and once again, you look back, uh, what happened three to four months ago, my body's now into the, it, it, actually, when you're under stress, it's called telogen effluvium. Yeah, that's a weird name, right? Um, so stress management is going to be vital for you. So what you do with that, of course, is um, you're gonna minimize your stress, whatever that is. It could be your work, it could be relationships. So strategies, um, it could be even sleep, because if you're not sleeping, that's a stressor to the body, and your sleep dictates what's called your circadian rhythm, which uh, also affects your cortisol. And so when you are stressed, you're making cortisol, so it's all interconnected. So what you can do for, um, for that, because you are getting a lot of clumps of hair coming out, stress management lifestyle is gonna be huge. So sleep's gonna be huge. Sleep, making sure it's dark room, making sure that it's cool, making sure there's no electronics in there, maybe even having some white noise. Stress management's gonna be everything from um, going out for long walks, spending time in nature, uh, meditation, yoga, prayer, those are all some strategies for stress management. Um, even taking like some adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, rhodiola, um, shishandra, those are some other ones as well. So going back to one that I really, really wanna make sure because we see this diabetes, insulin resistance is huge, huge, huge in our country that the type of eating plan that you're gonna have for that is more like a paleolithic, ketogenic, low carb type of eating plan where you wanna make sure that you're eating three meals a day and your carbs are gonna be higher um, even in the evening. You're gonna have a little bit at, at breakfast, a little bit more at lunch, and a little bit more at dinner so you can sleep and so you stabilize your blood sugar levels. So if you look at it, we have a lot of information that on our website, we've done videos on paleolithic, on ketogenic type eating plans, which is really just, they're just whole food eating plans where you're, you're kind of keeping your, your carb intake for women, especially under a hundred grams. So um, check that out in our, um, in one of our videos, uh, or you can go to our website and check that out. So those are some of the reasons um, and some strategies that you can start implementing. I hope this helped because I know about a few months ago, I had lost a lot of this hair and it was from stress and it was literally just coming out. I would do this and I would just have clumps of hair. I was like a dog shedding all over the place. So just wanted to pass this on to you. All right, hope this helps. Give us a thumbs up, share this with someone else and we appreciate you very much and I'll catch you on the next videos. See you later, bye.